Here we have a JMOL interface with the structure viewer on the left and the JMOL console where typed line commands are entered on the right. We'll load a PDB file. The structure appears and each of our ligands are also listed in the JMOL console. To access the pop-up menu, right-click or control-click anywhere in the black space. We'll first turn on selection halos. This will put a glow around everything that's selected so we can keep track. Now we'll select the protein and show it as a cartoon representation. Style Scheme Cartoon. We can also use the drop-down display menu to change our display. Now we'll select water molecules. And we want to hide them all to start because we only want to show the water molecules within the active site. Display Atom None. They disappear and now we can clear our selection. Notice they're still highlighted by select None. When we mouse over anything in the structure, its identity pops up. All but one of the ligands are in the center of the protein. This one on the periphery, if we hover over it, we see the letter K and identify this as the potassium ion. By rotating and zooming in on our structure, we can mouse over the three active site ligands and see their identities. The easiest way to select multiple ligands in JMOL is using the console. And we want to select both of our small molecule ligands to show them as sticks. With these two ligands selected, we can enter the pop-up menu again, select Style, Scheme, Sticks. And now they're shown in stick representation here. JMOL is a line command heavy program. So we recommend having a plain text file that's a cheat sheet for commands that you use frequently. So in my cheat sheet here, I have a command to select within five angstroms of ligands, and I can modify this to select within five angstroms of the three ligands specific to this structure. Now this is selecting the atoms that are within five angstroms. To extend this to the residues, we need another command. And we can see the rest of the amino acid residues light up. To display these as sticks, we can again visit our pop-up menu, Style, Scheme, Sticks. And now we have everything in the active site displayed as sticks. However, we'll notice we have these halos for unselected atoms. These are our water molecules. We'd like to show these as spheres, so let's remove our ligands and the protein from the selection. This command will remove the protein from the selection. And now we want to remove the ligands, which are heteroatoms. This is a similar command, so I'm going to use the up arrow on the keyboard and modify the code that pops up. This is the code we just executed. I'm going to remove the hetero groups and not water, since JMOL considers water a hetero group as well. When I execute, our ligands are no longer selected and just the water molecules are. Using the display drop-down menu, I can show these atoms at 20% of van der Waals radius. And there are our active site water molecules. Typically, metal ions are also shown as spheres. Here's our green magnesium and it's shown in stick representation. We'll now select that and change that to a sphere. We can change this in the display menu or with another typed command. And here's our sphere magnesium ion. Now our ligands look a lot like our protein because they're colored the same. So to make our ligands stand out, we're going to recolor them in a softer color palette. This I use my cheat sheet for and I can just fill in the ligands of interest here. So we'll color each of these atoms within glucose and AMP, these colors, and we'll make our metal magnesium. 
JML accepts multiple lines of code, so I can select that as a block, enter it in, and we've recolored everything, and we can see our contrasting ligands here and the beta glucose is behind. Now we'll type a command that will define our three ligands as something which we'll call ligbind. So this selection that I've put in parentheses is now called ligbind when I press return. We'll again select the atoms within five angstroms of all three ligands. So I can click the up arrow keys and find that command to re-execute it. So it's a select within five. Those become selected, and we want to remove the ligand atoms from this selection as well. We'll remove the hetero groups, but not water. What we're doing is creating a selection around ligbind that'll allow us to connect the nitrogen and oxygen atoms to show probable hydrogen bonds. This is a long command, so I'll use the cheat sheet. And we've connected oxygens and nitrogens to surrounding oxygens and nitrogens, which are within 3.3 angstroms. This is hydrogen bond distance. The struts are quite thick, so we will resize them. Select everything, set the struts to be thinner, and clear the selection. Now it's great to see our active site within the context of the protein to see where it is. However, the protein cartoon can obscure things. So we're going to turn off the cartoon. And this time we'll do this with a line command. Note that multiple lines of JML code can be separated with semicolons. Now we'd like to label some of the side chains that are hydrogen bonded directly to our ligand. To do this, we're going to set the picking so we can select atoms of these residues by clicking on them. So in the pop-up menu, by right-clicking, set picking, and we'll select atom. Now I can click on one atom and we'll see this is glycine 295 that comes up in our console and we can type a command to label it. Typing whatever we want here and then pressing return will bring up our label. And we can repeat this process for multiple residues in our structure. If you're deeply analyzing this, you'll probably want to find all of them and give them a label. Clicking on this camera icon up here will save the image, which will also be a file that can be opened in JMOL again and manipulated in 3D. Often for publication or printing, we like to have a white background. In the JMOL console, we can type background white, and here's our structure with the white background applied.